Hey, YouTubers. April the 3rd, 2020 here. Sheila Texter at Sheila's One Stop, where I am an author, a life coach, slash minister. Every Wednesday and Friday, I put out new YouTube videos. On Wednesdays, we talk about my book, Life After the Mistake, New Beginnings, and it is centered around adultery in the church, infidelity that happens sometimes in the church. All right, and then on Fridays, it's like coaching slash ministering. But today, and also I haven't been saying this, so I want to start saying this. Subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button and hit that like button. It feels good and it makes me happy. If you subscribe to my channel, and that way, every time a video comes out on Wednesdays and Fridays, if you like this kind of stuff, you're, you're going to love the book. You're going to love the Wednesdays about the book, The Life After the Mistake. But this is, this is awesome, too, on Fridays that we're going to be speaking. But today, I want to share a story about a woman named Mary Morrissey. I um, hope I'm saying that right. But she is seen a lot of times with Bob Proctor, but she's uh, like a life coach herself, and uh, they have different uh, courses that you can take. But I have listened to her quite a few times. I have, she's probably close to 70, maybe. I'm not sure. But she tells a story in around 1967, maybe 1969. I'm not for sure about the the years, but the story is true. She tells a story where she uh, she got pregnant before she got married, and at that time, the principal of that school told her she could not go to that school, told her parents they would have to put her in another school. So they put her in another school, and it was at night time because only pregnant pregnant women went there, and I think guys that were like troublemakers or whatever went to that school and that's where she graduated from so but if i don't think i think maybe around 19 years old she's in the hospital having a kidney surgery and this was at a time she said there was no dialysis you know and there was no kidney transplants and and they didn't have dialysis at the time and so they told her they said uh the best thing we can do is take out the bad kidney, and it might give you six months to live. Now, she has, now she has about a seven-month-old baby at the time. So, uh, she said that the night before her surgery, a like a chaplain came in. You know how they'll come around and ask you if you want prayer before surgery. Well, so she said the woman came in and pulled up a chair beside her, and began to talk to her, and she said, uh, would you mind me talking to you? I know I'm, I'm supposed to be praying with you, but can we talk for a minute? And so, you know, Mary's like, sure, you know. She didn't really know what else to say. She's 19 years old. She's could be possibly dying, you know. They gave her like six months if they got the kidney out. But she said this woman begins to tell her, and I kind of put this on one of my Facebook posts the other day about she everything is created twice, once in your mind and then once in reality. So she told Mary, she said, Mary, do you know that? And she said, you do know that, Mary. You just don't, you don't really think about it. She said, anytime, she said, the bed you're laying on, it used to just be a thought. The sheets. This hospital, this room, these machines, they were created once in the mind, and then they became a reality. So she told Mary, she said, "If will you do this for me? Will you, will you believe me if I tell you that if you believe strong enough, you won't even have to have surgery tomorrow? You know, and she began to tell her about a kidney and stuff, and she said, I don't know. And so she said, well, i tell you what. Will you believe this with me? Will you do this? And they were just trying to get her blood cell count up or something, you know, too, for after the surgery. She said, will you start 
telling yourself that you're going to get better. She, what happened, she began, Mary tells this woman, this chaplain in the hospital, about all her past and, and how she had so much resentment and bitterness and uh, she had toxic toxic uh, thinking and all this stayed on her and the chaplain the woman was telling her she really felt like a lot of what Mary was dwelling on was affecting her body physically and I'm and that's a whole nother video but that does happen that can happen what you dwell on here can affect your physical body and what it you know and what it does so she asked Mary, she says, uh, Mary, do you believe that uh, after you have surgery that your other kidney can pick up and carry on? And Mary says, yeah, I, I can believe that. And she said, well, this is what I want you to do. Every time you think about your son, you think about taking him by his hand and going into the into the school for his first day of school. She said, I want you to imagine that. I want you to picture that in your mind. She said, and then I want you to picture yourself being down on the front row of a graduation. And she said, and your son, your seven-month-old son, is now graduating at 18 years old. She said, then I want you to imagine and think in your mind that you are at your son's wedding and imagine him getting married and, and, and the food. She said, really picture a wedding in your head. And so she had asked Mary, what, Mary, what do you really want to do? What did you want to do? What are you wanting to do? What are you wanting out of life? And she said, well, really, I, I wanted to be a teacher. And so she told her, she said, see yourself teaching those children. See yourself going to college and getting the degree that you need to teach that class. She said, see that in your mind. So the next day, Mary has the surgery. And about seven, five, six, seven days later, she said, the doctors come in and said, we don't know what's going on, but... Your other kidney is, is doing awesome. And if it continues to get better, they said you could live a year. So she went home. So she actually went home, something she didn't even think she was going to get to do. And she said that would not leave her mind about that woman coming in there and telling her that Everything is created twice, once in your mind, and then once comes out, you know, it's uh, produced, you know. And so she said that, sure enough, she kept getting better and better, and every time she would go to back to the doctor, they said, they would say, they told her, we said, we don't know what you're doing. You should have done been dead. But whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And basically, all she did was change the way she was thinking. She quit dwelling on death and only having one kidney. She was thinking about taking her little boy into kindergarten class. She was thinking about sitting on the front row of his graduation. And then she pictured herself being at his wedding. And she's almost 70 years old, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, around 70 years old. And she said, I've seen all that come to pass. I became a teacher. You know, and she said, even though I did not stay with that, I still became a teacher. So, and I am a living witness of this very uh, thing because the Bible says, and that's why I said this is the ministering part. In Proverbs, it said, it says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now, that's not talking about this blood pumping heart. The heart of man is the spirit of man. It's his mind. As a man thinketh in his mind, so is he. So, if you 
are saying, I'm so sad. I'm just depressed. And today is going to be, it's a rainy, dreary day. So I'm not, it's going to be a bad day. Then more than likely, it's going to be a bad day. You know, because it's kind of like the law of attraction. I may say that a lot in these coaching videos. But that's where we are. We are at the law of attraction. Even in this coronavirus season, even in all the scariness, I, I posted on Facebook today, God's word is still true. The Bible says it'll stand when the world is on fire. The word of God is true, whether it's a war going on, whether there's uh, diseases going on, whether there's earthquakes going on, tornadoes, whatever is going on, God's word is still true. And we might say, there may be people even now in this season that are saying, well, I'm not, there's no sense in even trying to move forward and stuff like that. There's no sense in me trying to change the way I think because we're all doomed and if we get through this, then I might do it. But why not start today? Why not start today? I'm hoping that within the next few months that I will have some course packages. I will have some, uh, some things that you can download and print off and different things that could help you change the way that you think and get you going in a different direction there's an old there's a saying i think it's uh i think it's zig ziglar said said it you don't have to be great to start but you have to start to be great so i am where i am today i am an author my book is finished it's not out published and printed on amazon yet but the book is finished I have a life coaching certificate. I have been evangelist, ministering, preaching for probably 30-something years. I've lived for God all of my life. So I, I have a little bit of wisdom and knowledge under my belt toward take to help a person move forward from getting out of a job that you just hate you know, I don't believe God intended for us to live like that. You may have to stay there while you're trying to do something else. But there is hope that something else can happen in your life. So I challenge you today. What are you dwelling on? And what would you like to see happen? What do you see what is your passion? What is it that you love to do? What really excites you? And if there's nothing there, then man, you have really went off the deep end. But it's still not without hope. If you're watching this video and you've watched it this far, that means you're looking for something. You are looking for for some help, you're looking for that right words, you're looking for something that can turn your life around. So I'm fixing to go, I'm getting off of here today. Again, subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, and stay tuned for more videos every Wednesday, every Friday. For the Wednesday will be the life after the mistake about my book, the book journey. And after the book comes out and after I've kind of went over the book a lot, I'm hoping to turn that channel into helping people on their author journey. I don't plan, I don't claim to be uh, a expert, but I have learned a little bit and I'm hoping to learn more because I am writing even now my second book to go it's hoping hopefully it'll be a series to the first book but you have a great day be encouraged think about what you are thinking about and just get some different thought patterns until next friday think different